Bram Stoker's Dracula is a truly dark movie, but it's also a movie that has a lot of weird fairy tale esque imagery blended into its tragic narrative. While obviously a horror film, Francis Ford Coppola's version of the story is told through lots of impressive imagery that sort of looks like it's being filmed during a stage play. And while a lot of this film happens to be focused on a way less realistic depiction of violence and logic comparatively to a lot of films made today, it still manages to pull off being a pretty damn fascinating experience in its own creepy way. What a lot of people might find to be silly and pretentious, I personally think is both interesting and fun. And this is why I think Bram Stoker's Dracula may actually be one of the best horror movies of that entire decade. Usually when you go into watching a Dracula movie, you more or less know what you're getting into. Over the last hundred years, Hollywood has sort of popularized the Bela Lugosi portrayal of the Count and his metamorphosis into a bat in a very old school black and white way. This is how Dracula started out his claim to fame in the movies and this is how we've come to recognize him since. But in reality, the character Bram Stoker created back in the 1800s was much more of a manipulative bastard than what I think a lot of people really thought of in the various film adaptations made since. Being somewhat created through the inspiration of what many have said was the real-life historical figure of Vlad the Impaler, Bram Stoker's version of Dracula in the novel was obviously not identical to what you'd see in the 1930s movies. And when it came time for Francis Ford Coppola to make his own version of the story, well, here's where things get truly interesting. The way this 1992 adaptation kicks itself off is with the tragic retelling of how a man sold his soul to the devil. Renouncing God once his lover committed suicide, the great warrior from the House Dragul would cast his sword into a Christian cross and look on in awe at the fountain of blood that would soon pour out of it. This entire opening scene is obviously done in a stylish and unrealistic manner that sort of sets the stage for what's to come. And in just a few short moments, we immediately get a sense of not only how this character made the turn to the dark side, but also how Francis Ford Coppola will handle the tone of the subject matter going forward. Bram Stoker's Dracula is not supposed to be taken in a very literal manner. Much of its imagery and horror stems from bizarre filmmaking choices that sort of give the audience members the impression that what they're watching is totally unlike any modern horror film that they've ever seen before, let alone of Dracula. As more and more actors start to get introduced into the story by the likes of Keanu Reeves, Winona Ryder, and Sir Anthony Hopkins, the film starts to take on something of a gothic approach to horror that I guess could be compared to something like Batman Returns, but in reality it's way more stylized than even that in my opinion. I think all of this is sort of captured the best through the performance of Gary Oldman, who not only plays Count Dracula, but also plays him in several different ages and subsequently several different ways. This actor not only shows us old, decrepit, and disgusting Dracula, but also the young, vibrant, and manipulative version of the character that tries to convince Mina to be his bride. There are also moments where the Count turns into a monstrous, demonic vampire bat, and even a large, hairy, werewolf-like creature that seduces Lucy in a pretty shocking and fucked up scene in that film. Everyone that shows up to play a character in the movie does a pretty good job, even though Keanu Reeves is still kind of stuck in his Bill and Ted mode. But when it comes down to who really gave what I'd call the most noteworthy performance, it just has to be Gary Oldman. If you've never seen this film, Gary Oldman was somehow able to convince audiences that he was not only playing a Lord of the Undead, but also a tragic Christian warrior who just wants to get his lover back and it's something that I honestly think is truly remarkable. When Francis Ford Coppola shoots some of these scenes with bright reds and random dances and candlelight, you get a sense of the very storybook-esque sensibilities that he's trying to pull here. And Gary Oldman's dedication to giving a believable and consistent performance between old man, young man, and monster really glues this whole thing together. 
I think if you go into this movie expecting a random series of jump scares or even just a sense of danger and violence through ambiance like something out of Halloween, you're going to be genuinely disappointed. But if you go into it trying to see a true horror movie that indulges in horrifying things outside of the normal bloody kills and vicious tone, you're probably going to have a great time. Bram Stoker's Dracula is a movie that I think was able to put on a good scary show in 1992, all while still being true to its 1800 roots in a very gothic and impressive way. Possibly the scene that sticks out the most to me in this fashion has to be the moment where Jonathan Harker is being lured into his doom by the female vampires. In this single scene, Francis Ford Coppola is able to show the audience a level of depravity and evil that I really don't think I've ever seen anyone else do in literally any other movie I've ever watched. After being obviously tricked into a sensual encounter with the Brides of Dracula, Jonathan is soon attacked on a pretty erotic level that borderlines on the just flat out perverse while you're watching it. This guy is clearly fucked up and he may be about to die because of it. But just when things get even more unsettling, the Count himself appears before the women and tells them to get out of there and not dare touch this man ever again. This is where they all sort of gather around Dracula and ask him what it is that they're supposed to eat. And that's when this movie cranks the terror up to 11 in my opinion. All while Jonathan Harker looks on in shock and disbelief, a crying baby is pulled out by Dracula just before he sets it out to be offered up as a meal to the female vampires. Clearly drained of energy and horrified by what he's seeing, Jonathan is only able to let out a horrible cry while Dracula looks at him dead in the eyes, smiles, and then begins to laugh hysterically in one of the most evil things I think I've ever seen in film. Unlike contemporary movies that would try to be horrific by just upping the gore or violence, this movie focuses on the ideas of evil and why they are evil in order to make its audience feel uneasy, and it does this time and time again in a very effective manner. Bram Stoker's Dracula might put a few people off for not being quote, real enough or accurate to what would happen in real life, but in my opinion, Coppola's decision to show this sort of mean-spirited behavior in a very stylized way is what made the film so memorable. Don't get me wrong, this movie has a lot of pretty bloody and violent scenes as the story goes on, but the way in which I think the director makes it the most effective is when it's done through the blend of beauty and terror in each individual scene. Anyways guys, this is just a handful of the reasons that I think Bram Stoker's Dracula is such a great movie. While it's obviously not one of the greatest films ever made, and it isn't exactly what I'd call a normal experience, the way in which the director was able to capture that manic freak show of a character from the 1800s in a movie made a hundred years later has always fascinated me. And I'm sure I'm not the only one out there. Anyways guys, I'd love to know what all of you think about this movie. Have you ever seen Bram Stoker's Dracula? And if so, what do you think about it? Whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.